I'm just wondering, uh, because we uh, have a few minutes remaining, if we may just touch a bit as we're winding up on the KAA and uh, the KQ, the KQKA takeover uh, debate that is, uh, of course, uh, in the public domain right now. Yesterday we discussed exhaustively about it, but I just wanted to hear also from you as well. Uh, do you in any way see any duck in the belly with this particular uh, arrangement? We begin with you, uh, uh, Tenda Molo, briefly. Yeah, um, as a winding up, uh, so we I think this is a subject time. that we may need to discuss a little longer yeah. at a later date. Uh, so we because, actually shall. Uh, no, no, we can we comment can on it briefly because, it, okay. because it's also topical right now. I have many questions, and I think many people have many legitimate questions. Let me pose only three. One, Kenya Airports Authority is established by an act of parliament. It is a statutory body. Kenya Airways is a publicly listed but private body. It is a company. Mm -hmm. I do not understand conceptually how a statutory body can be taken over by a private company. Even legally, even factually, I cannot conceive of it. Mm -hmm. Two, the role of the Kenya Airport Authority is so fundamental and wide, including establishing of aerodromes, Reed Airport, mm -hmm. including managing all airstrips in this country, including airstrips that are small like the one in Homer Bay and Siaya, which Kenya, Kenya always does not even know exist, including licensing of private airstrips. The functions of KAA are so fundamental and so out of league of Kenya Airways that I do not understand how they can do it. My third and last question is when one says, as the MD of KQ was saying, that it, they were not the initiators of the idea, that the decision the communication came from the PSS and it was supposed to be from high and all that. And as you are narrating, you said probably from cabinet and all. The constitution is clear. Who is this higher authority? Is it cabinet? If it's the cabinet, the constitution under Article 153 1 is very clear. Any decision of the cabinet must be in writing. Was he given a decision in writing? Mm. Any decision by the president must be in writing. Yes. Article 135. Was there any such decision? So who is this shadowy figure or persons who made the decisions which do not comply with the Constitution? And if they don't, then how, why were they acted on? There are many legitimate questions mm -hmm. that need to be asked around this. Right. right Jacque, also, uh, this will serve as your closing st uh, statement. Uh, Otena Mwana. Yes, thank you. Thank right. you. Uh, two Sundays ago, I was on the flight. I think it was specifically on the 17th. I was in a flight with Esther Koymet. Out of nowhere, I asked her, who is behind the scam? Then she told me about, she used many, many jargons. We are trying to make government efficient. I said, <laughs> but you are changing the structure of government. <laughs> and I told her, who owns the planes, the assets? Where are the assets of KQ that you want to give it the power over assets of, that belong to Kenya, being a private company? They say, no, we can work out a way and all that. Now, that I saw her name as one of the people behind this thing. I was actually shocked because she was talking as if somebody was doing it from somewhere. <laughs> but I wasn't alone. I was with people, but I talked to her in public because I th I, some, my instinct told me that somebody <clears throat> is really, the people, the mysterious owners of the planes in Kenya Airways, because that's probably the only asset Kenya Airways has, the planes are owned by shadowy figures registered uh, in Jersey Island. I'm told one of the criminals being sought after today by the DCI, uh, who recorded a statement the other day, fronts for some of those planes. Mm -hmm. Now, my issue is KQ is a profit, uh, is, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loss making company. KQ is mismanaged. KQ has no plans. KQ is a shadowy company. The Senate investigated it, uh, it last year and didn't go very far because of the shadowy figures involved. I want to appreciate Parliament Thank you. for saying no to this scam because it's a very big scam. Thank you. You know, we, we already have a problem with uh, KQ. I'm a member of the uh, Senate Finance and Budget Committee. And constitutionally, every loan guarantee should be by approval of Parliament, not National Assembly. Somebody mischievously 
uh, took before the National Assembly uh, Committee and got the loan uh, guarantee that KQ got from taxpayers <coughs> last, uh, last financial year. It never came to Senate. And the, that is an active question that uh, we recently put before the Cabinet Secretary for Finance. Actually, he had sent his CAS. Therefore, and uh, they are before us, they're supposed to give us answers on how they managed to get taxpayers' money without the proper approval of, 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 of Parliament, because it should have been done at National Assembly and Senate as well. While we are still at that, then we are hit with this news where uh, the managing director goes before a parliamentary committee and says, it wasn't my decision after all. This is a decision that was made at cabinet level and we were only told to execute. We shouldn't allow them to get away with that because what the members of that uh, committee, and Otiende, you're a member of uh, PIC, you need to ask, yes. uh, P P PSC, you need to ask that uh, MD when he comes back later on this week to show you documentary proof of that letter Thank you. that asked them to execute this mandate because we need to know the secretary to the cabinet need to confirm that was it something they, they decided at cabinet? And if so, why did they hide it from parliament? Thank you, Senator. We cannot allow this to happen. Thank you. Senator thank you. I Let's sat on the special investigative committee chaired by uh, Professor Peter Nyang Nyong into this matter. And therefore, let us not use this limited time to discuss such an important issue. I'll therefore use my closing remarks by telling uh, Ambassador Amina CS Education to stop experimenting with the lives of our youth. They cannot raise universities' fees mm -hmm. by 200%. It is going to result into 99% of the children of the poor, who, by the way, are the majority of the university. <coughs> They'll drop out of the university. Thank you. The ministry should guide the universities on invo innovative ways thank you. of generating income. Thank you, thank you. But you should read also a tweet by Sam uh, Akwale who's saying yes. uh, 21 billion shillings will pay three times over the money owed to help by jobless graduates. Secondly, Mahocha, that is Boni Mtetezi, uh, will tell you Kulalu in Luya means a big madman. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you closing me, Max? Yes, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dibal. Uh, one, I'm, I'm the chairman of, uh, of Roads and Transport in Senate. And um, so I, I'll, I'll limit my comments to the extent of the information I have. First, I want Thank to you. confirm that uh, I've, I've had a discussion with, uh, with the management of Kenya Airports Authority about uh, in our last session of parliament on this matter in a, in, in a meeting where they raised the matter. And uh, we had invited them in my committee to have this discussion before it was taken up by PSC and uh, PIC in, in National Assembly. And I believe we'll still be able to, to, to have a go at it. Now, but but uh, of importance, the, the questions that KEA then raised with us at that particular time was, and, and uh, I was trying to, to look at it in comparison to what happens when other airlines are involved, for example, with, with airports. If you look at uh, some airlines like Emirates, they have a dedicated terminal. In, in the airport in Dubai, where, where they, they run, mm. they own some duty free shops, but that is only to the extent of uh, their, their, their right to use that particular place. Now, now, the questions that were being raised by KA, especially uh, as to the place of other airlines, whereby if it is KQ managing the airport and the, and the concept was they manage the airport, mm. then how do they handle uh, other, other airlines, for example, in terms of, of, of uh, fees Thank you. and so on? And, and, and so I, I believe this is a discussion that will be coming to my committee. I'll, I'll, I'll be listening so to we it keenly. And, and, and uh, absolutely, we'll be making the right comments once Thank you. we have the information. Right. Uh, just uh, we were struck for time. But let me just, uh, my director, Jackie, read one or two tweets as we're winding up. Uh, John Ogola is saying, Dot should be <coughs> caught in competence. How can he, uh, the main, the, ha, can he have the intention when all he does is issue bombastic presses assuring the public that he has watertight cases? only for them to subsequently stall for lack of sufficient evidence. Let's not glorify incompetence. Uh, this is a debate about uh, the DCA that uh, we, were, and we were talking about. Also, we have uh, a leadership front saying, it's about time that the president, uh, that is Uru Kenyatta, walk the talk, stop the roadshow and act, let the handshake be put aside and the corruption be fought from all ends. Uh, Raila should do something if at all he wants a peaceful country. This is what uh, leadership uh, front is saying. And we'll leave you also with this editorial cartoon uh, that has been drawn today uh, by Gado. Uh, it's all about also the 
Huduma, hashtag Huduma number demystified. The card comes with a Eurobond app, which has SGR speed. It is connected to the IBC biometric servers, and it will be fitted with an IYS if miss microchip. And we leave it at that so much. Uh, uh, grateful that you've been also uh, driving the show with me. I really appreciate our panelists as well this morning. Thank you.